untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Games video. Today we're taking a look at a banned aura strategy, which I haven't seen many people play on the ladder so far. And the plan is very simple, play some cheap creatures and then load them up with enchantments to win the game. And we've got some great payoffs for doing so, including a Light Paws, Emperor's Voice, 2 mana, 2-2 two -two legendary creature. Says whenever an aura enters the battlefield under our control, if we cast it, we may search our library for an aura with the same mana value or less and attach it to Light Paws, although that aura has to have a different name than any other aura on the battlefield, so that's why it's important to have a couple one-offs to search up with Light Pause's ability, which we'll see later here. And then we also have four copies of Stram, another legendary two-drop, says whenever we cast an aura spell we get to draw a card, so that can make sure we keep up on the card advantage, even if some of our creatures do eventually get removed. And then we also have two copies of the Illuminator Virtuoso, 1-1 one, one double strike, and whenever it becomes the target of a spell we control, it connives, so that's a great way to cycle through the deck and to load additional counters onto the Virtuoso, which can then present a ton of damage out of nowhere. And then the main reason I dipped into green after trying a bunch of different color combinations, including black-white as well, giving access to early disruption with Thoughtseize is nice, but I found the version, including Generous Visitor, to work a lot better. A 1-1 one, one saying whenever we cast an enchantment spell, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. So sometimes we just play Visitor and then load up the Visitor with a bunch of enchantments, although sometimes we can also play Visitor, play a 2-drop, and then start playing all our auras and get additional counters in the process. And the Visitor will also trigger off cast an Alsaid of Life's Bounty or Final Creature, 1-1 one, one Lifelink. It counts as an enchantment creature, so it will grow cards like All That Glitters and Ethereal Armor while triggering our Generous Visitor. And we can also sacrifice it for one mana and then target creature or enchantment we control gains protection from the color of our choice until end of turn. So that can be a great way to protect one of our key creatures from opposing removal spells. We can also use it to maybe deal the last points of damage if our opponent only has creatures of a single color back on defense. And that can definitely come up in this format with decks like Mono white, which has only white creatures, we've got mono red, there's mono green devotion, and then the Alsate can also be a great way to close out the game. And then taking a look at the auras, of course we have the full set of Ethereal Armor recently added in the Explorer Anthology expansion, giving plus one plus one for each enchantment we control as well as first strike. So this is one of the first auras we're going to try and search up with Light Paws after playing a one mana aura. And then at two mana there's all the Glitters, which is very similar, giving plus one plus one for each artifact and or enchantment we control. No artifacts in this deck, so for the most part it's a worse Ethereal Armor, but because it costs two mana it allows us to find other two mana auras with Light Paws out, which is important to maybe find a Staggering Insight, which gives plus one plus one and a lifelink, which can be very important against the red aggro decks, and whenever our creature deals combat damage to an opponent we also get to draw a card, and then some additional one-offs at two mana include Ether Tunnel to give plus one plus one and make our creature unblockable, we've got Cartouche of Knowledge giving plus one plus one and flying as well as drawing a card in the process, and then we've got a little bit of removal in the form of a Warbriar Blessing, which will give our creature two extra toughness and let it fight an opposing creature when the Blessing enters the battlefield. And then additional one mana enchantments also include Comot Research, another relatively new addition, enchanting our creature, and then whenever it deals damage to the opponent we get to draw a card, but as long as the enchanted creature is legendary, it will also get plus one plus one and ward one. So that's very useful to put on Light Paws or SRAM to help protect them, as well as making them bigger. And then we also have two copies of Cartouche of Solidarity, giving plus one plus one and first strike, as well as making a one one warrior token, can be helpful against sacrifice effects, so we can now sacrifice the warrior instead of our loaded up creature and can also be helpful against removal heavy decks in general as we now at least have a 1-1 one -one warrior left over that we can keep enchanting and then we also have two copies of Sentinel's Eyes, giving plus one plus one and Vigilance, can also be escaped out of the graveyard, so we typically don't mind discarding it to the Knife from Virtuoso, as we'll often still be able to replay it. Then Arcane Flight as a second flying enchantment, giving plus one plus one as well, and last but not least, Audacity, giving plus two plus two and Trample, and when it's put into the graveyard from the battlefield, we also get to draw a card, so that's a very recent addition from the Brothers War. And then building the mana base is tricky, since we want a low land count, so that we can keep hands with a couple spells and a couple creatures, ideally, and we don't want to flood out necessarily, but we also want our lands to produce multiple colors, since if I cast a turn one visitor, then at turn two I might want to cast a staggering insight, and then if my land only makes green mana, that's not going to work, and we often find ourselves wanting to cast multiple white spells in the same turn, since we have lots of these white auras, sometimes we want to play a light pause or stram and a one mana aura in the same turn, so we want a lot of different colors in the mana, which is why I'm playing all eight shock lands in white with hallowed fountain and temple garden, then only two copies of botanic 
Technical Sanctum, since I don't want a lot of lands that can't make white mana, even though the Sanctum coming into play untapped and not costing any life is very nice. Then we have one Plains in case of any land destruction, a Gansha, which can also be channeled if we control a legendary creature for pretty cheap, and then the full set of Mana Confluence, which is also a necessary evil, even though it costs us life whenever we tap it. We need that additional mana fixing to have enough colors to cast all our spells, and then a couple Pain Lands as well with a Brush Land and a Dark Car Wastes. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand is relying on Light Pass surviving, but uh, I'll try it out. Can also wait to play it until turn 3 maybe, and then get some immediate value, at least get a Warrior Token from the Cartouche so we can enchant that. Opponent had to play with fire. Goes upstairs. Maybe see an early Eidolon. Another play with fire, so I'm glad they're pointing those upstairs instead of at light pause. Maybe see a light up the stage, since they just enabled spectacle. Nope, just to secure the critics. Okay, so I don't think I want to run out light pause just yet, but next turn we can play and enchant. Hopefully after the opponent taps out. Chandra. Alright, so mission accomplished. And then Cartouche can get maybe our uh, ethereal armor, which would be plus two plus two. So it's going to be hard for the opponent to burn out our creature. I guess we'll end up taking one damage either way. So I might as well get the Temple Garden and play now. And step one, I think, Ethereal Armor. So we've got a 5-5 that will keep growing. And if they somehow do have two more burn spells to take it out, we at least have our Warrior Token now to enchant. So two cards in hand. And then all the Glitters can find our Lifelink enchantment. And then it's going to be really difficult for the opponent to recover. Bone Crusher goes upstairs. We're at seven. And an Eidolon, a little bit late to the party. So, yeah, all that glitters, step one. And get our Staggering Insight. Could also go for Warbriar Blessing to take out Eidolon, but this seems better. And then Audacity for Trample. And what do we want to get? Sentinel size for vigilance probably over combat research. Got 19. And I guess getting arcane flight would have just been lethal here, but that's fine. We'll get an extra turn, killing Chandra, gaining 19. And then next turn we can finish him off. But yeah, if we got arcane flight here, we should have gotten uh, just enough to kill the opponent. Okay. And our opponent explodes, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Jigantha as companion, so it could be a red-white heroic deck, which has been pretty popular lately. Our hand's decent. Turn 1 Visitor, turn 2 Light Paws, which we can then enchant. Having a redundant creature in case they kill one of them is important, and our opponent is indeed on heroic with turn 1 Hoplite. Virtuous is an interesting twist, could run that out as well. I think I'm still in favor of a light pause first. Could also load up Visitor. We get two counters and then plus two plus two, so it would be out of range from a potential Reckless Rage. And then next turn with a land, it's going to be easier to deploy light pause and get immediate value. So I don't hate that idea either. And then we have to play armor over Sentinel's Eyes to get it out of range from a Reckless Rage. So now we've got a 5-5. Five, five. And there's a lane, so next turn we can Light Paws Sentinel's Eyes, or Virtuoso. But I'm guessing Light Paws is going to be better for us. Now the Heroic deck can always kill out of nowhere, especially with the protection from God's Willing. So the fact that we have two differently colored creatures could also be important. For now, Hoplite hits for three. 
If our opponent passes with red mana up, we definitely suspect a Reckless Rage. So I can play Light Paws and then just Sentinel's Eyes on the Visitor. Or Audacity in option 2 now. And I don't mind the Trample. So we'll just keep loading up on the Visitor. And what does Light Paws get? Don't have a ton of options. Cartouche maybe for an extra creature to jump with. And then attack for 10. And hopefully we don't die next turn. Opponent jumps, so they may have a way to prevent the damage on the Hoplite with an instant here. A Reckless Rage. Alright, so Visitor down actually. But now we have a Light Pause we can enchant. So going for Sentinel's Eyes, I guess would have played around Reckless Rage here. Defiant Strike up to 8. Happy to jump with our 1 1. So the second Reckless Rage could hurt now. But just a Swiss Pier. Alright, so we have to get back on the board. At least now we can get Ethereal Armor again. So play Visitor first and then two more 1 mana auras, I think, over Virtuoso. And we can get an Arcane Flight as well. And that should be game. Alright, so very close one here against Heroic. Probably could have played around Rankless Rage a little bit better, but didn't get punished to the maximum. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And uh, missing green mana for turn 1 Visitor. Is this still good enough? Turn to Stram can load it up or Virtuoso. Yeah, the fact that we're on the play still makes me keep this. And then we can maybe discard Visitor to the Connive from Virtuoso and still get a counter out of it. Put on to Red Black. So I think still Virtuoso over Stram. And uh, I guess we'll take two since I'll probably end up uh, playing it untapped at some point. Opponent passes, maybe with removal at the ready. And they're gonna wait to cast it. Yeah, if I go for an enchantment in response to removal, I could maybe draw a card with SRAM, but opponent's still gonna get a good deal. So maybe the best move is just to attack and then go with SRAM plus Visitor, and then our opponent can decide to kill one of my creatures, but at least we'll not get punished. So they may kill Sram here end of turn with a stomp. Fatal push instead. Okay, so next turn we can load up on Virtuoso. If that's still around, if not, visitors left. Alright, Fable. Ether Tunnel could also come in handy. So I may be able to discard Sentinel's Eyes to connive and then still get it back. So step one, combat research. And then double strike plus combat research is also a neat combo. Ooh, light pause. So maybe we'll start by discarding Sentinel's Eyes, keep the land for now. Yeah, I think I'm still going all in on the uh, Virtuoso here. Ether Tunnel, Connive. Discard light pause, or now we can discard Confluence. And then a Sentinel's Eyes to boot. Get an extra counter. Knife and Ethereal Armor is tempting. If they kill Virtuoso with another Fatal Push, I think I prefer having Light Paws. And of course we'll get to draw a few cards here too. And uh, yeah, attack for 16. Draw two cards. And our opponent will need a pretty specific answer. 
As it turns out, after drawing a few more creatures, holding ethereal armor could have worked out better. And Mayhem Devil points towards a sacrifice deck. So those typically have fewer spot removal spells, but they may have Claim the Firstborn, which is scary in its own right. Shaman attacks since they needed the mana, we can block. Harvester is fine. So your opponent's digging for a fatal push, and they did not find one. Awesome. Get to rank up here as well. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Obosh as companion. So, could be a red aggro deck. And uh, yeah, we've got several creatures, so if they kill a few of them, it's not the end of the world. But we will be dealing ourselves some damage with our own mana base. Turn 1's Fist Spear is always good. So, might as well play this untapped, and then between Alsade and Visitor. I think I would rather keep the Alsade alive for the lifelink, since we currently don't have access to our uh, Staggering Insight. Turn 2, likely still play SRAM. And then, if they kill everything, we'll still have an Alsade left to enchant. For now, Phoenix Chick. And we'll take 2. Could see a light of this stage, second main. Soulscar Mage instead. Okay. So, still in favor of SRAM. And then next turn we'll take a beating. If SRAM survives, great. If not, we can play Alsade times two, plus maybe an Ethereal Armor. And uh, yeah, they must have some instant here to enable prowess, so we'll take it. Despite having a bush as companion, they're still allowed to play Bonecrusher Giant and Stomp for two mana. Goblin Chain Warlord is good to know about, so we want to grow the Visitor here if possible. And a Skewer kills Sram. So yeah, it's very much possible they didn't have any instants and blocking would have worked out for us. We've got a backup Sram, so now we can still play Sram and Ethereal Armor, put counter on Visitor or on Sram itself. And yeah, I guess we'll grow Sram itself. So it's a little harder to kill for them. And counter on Visitor. Now our opponent will shrink our team down with a Chain Whirler because of Soulscar Mage. So Visitor may as well attack since it's not going to be a good blocker. Chandra on the play. So no Chain Whirler. I hope you like your extra and it's one mana. And Stomp to shrink SRAM. Still have a 1-1, one, one, still taking 7. Okay, Botanical Sanctum a little bit late to the party. So how do we survive here? Opponent also has a Ramona Prune, so if they draw a land, we're dead. So my best bet is play Alsade, and then I'll still take damage of my mana to cast another spell afterwards. So that part's not great. But we can maybe kill Chandra here. So, Visitor pumps itself. And then Cartouche could give the Alsate flying, so it can also block a Phoenix Chick. And uh, take it from there. So we're at 2. Grow Alsade. Find a Staggering Insight. Draw step 2 late here. And Mana Confluence still lets me play Ethereal Armor. But if I play Ethereal Armor, I'll be at 1. And then Chandra kills me, so I have to kill Chandra. And then I guess we could survive. And then Armor on the Alsade makes sense. Counter on Alsade. But we're still dead to a land to activate Ramona Ruins. Alright, it's a very precarious spot. Way different than I expected. And our opponent explodes. Wow, managed to stabilize at one life against Moderat. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play facing Yurion, so typically a more controlling build. And our hand at least has a few redundant creatures. And hopefully we'll find some more auras soon. So can play a Shrine first since we have a replacement, and I wouldn't mind drawing more cards anyway. And then next turn maybe go a Light Paws plus Armor on Sram, and then Light Paws can be enchanted. Virtuoso is not at its best in this hand since we don't have a ton of auras to connive with. Now Lia's Presence can set up a one-mana Leyline Binding. The upside of Virtuoso is that it does help us discard additional Srams if our opponent doesn't kill it. So let's just take two. Go Light Paws plus Ethereal Armor. And then what to get with Light Paws? Maybe enchantment that protects it, giving a ward one. The uh, Comet Research. Sure. And hit for four. I'll say it could also be helpful at protecting one of our creatures, although we are currently out of auras. Deputy does not go after Light Paws, but can go after Sram. And then step one, attack with Light Paws, see what we draw. So Deputy points towards an Enigmatic Incarnation build. All that glitters. Okay, so I can play probably another Sram. Play All Sade, keep up one mana for protection. And then next turn, move in with All that glitters. Seems fine. Could have uh, sequenced my lands a little bit better. And save myself one damage potentially by tapping this for Colorless to play Sram. But that's okay. So do we see an Enigmatic Incarnation? Can sacrifice Nylea's Presence, get a 3-drop. Yep. So that may get another removal spell, forcing us to sacrifice Allsade. Allsade can also protect enchantments, so if they, instead of going after a creature, go after an enchantment, we can still save it. Channeler to make a 1-1. One, one. Okay, so they've got some blockers. So I can play Visitor, play all that Glitters, and still keep up the Allsade's ability. And then all that Glitters... Could get Ether Tunnel to guarantee hitting the opponents. Yeah, kind of like that idea. Get to draw Sram. Find another one. And then Ether Tunnel would set up lethal over the course of two turns. Think that's probably our best move. Audacity for Trample, also an option. And hit for nine. And then we get to draw. Finding Sentinel's Eyes, which we can still play. So play Sentinel's Eyes on maybe a different creature, like uh, Sram here. And then I'll put counter on Sram just to diversify. And what to get with Light Paws. Maybe an Audacity, in case they do manage to take it out. That way we still draw a card. Okay, let's see how our opponent gets out of this. With the Allsade in play, it's going to be tricky, but a combination of getting a creature plus having a Leyline Binding at instant speed could maybe get there. Alright, never mind. Opponent throws in the towel, and that's game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Visitor into Light Paws. Sign me up. And then potentially we get to draw a lot of cards. So yeah, this is close to our ideal hand. Two creatures, so if one gets answered we have a backup and then a nice mix of enchantments. Turn one island, so opponent on Mono Blue Spirits. Yeah, resolving a Light Paws is a big deal. And then next turn we can load it up. So our opponent will need some bounce spells here to uh, keep up essentially. And then even if they counter our spells, we'll still get the cast trigger of Generous Visitor to put a plus one counter somewhere. So couldn't really have asked for a better start against Mono Blue Spirits. Faceless Haven, so one blue spell available. Okay, can hang on to Iganjo as removal. So step one may be Comet Research on Light Paws, see if that sticks. And then I'll maybe diversify my counter here. 
Spirit can turn into a 2-3. And then we can grab Ethereal Armor first. That seems decent. Audacity for Trample, also an option. But this deals the most damage. And then can go for maybe an all that glitters on Visitor. And then Light Pass gets Staggering Insight. And I'll grow the Visitor itself. And yeah, our opponent has seen enough. Even if they did have a bit of interaction, they're way too far behind already. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and yeah, this is a nice start. Visitor into Light Paws with plenty of auras. Opponents with a turn one swamp and a thought seize, so Light Paws down. And yeah, we could be in trouble now if they have removal for Visitor. So let's make the most out of it. Comet Research to draw, and then probably an Ethereal Armor as well. And hope to find a replacement creature, since we might need it. Staggering Insights, alright. Fingers crossed for no Fatal Push. Opponent passes, and Virtuos is a nice pickup, so can attack, force him to kill Visitor. And add another creature to the board. Opponent takes it, down to 8. And yeah. Virtuoso seems fine. Grizzly Salvage, so looks like a Grease Fang deck. They hit Chariots as their vehicle. Typically don't see this many basics, so it was kind of thrown off. So they get Chariots. And yeah, we don't have a form of evasion here to give Trample or Flying. So the cat tokens are going to be annoying. Take four. Had we just gone for an Althead Glitters last turn, we might have had lethal. Allsade can give protection from green to the visitor, and then by playing Allsade we go up to six power, so that should do it. And luckily don't have any green auras on the visitor that would fall off, which is a concern otherwise. Awesome. So quick game here against Grease Fang, despite the early Thoughtseize. Alright, so this Bant Aura deck seems to have what it takes to compete in the best of one Explorer meta game, despite still missing a few cards from Pioneer, like the Griff's Boon and the one mana hexproof creatures that we can maybe enchant. The deck is still good enough to compete in Explorer right now, so that's exciting having this new archetype that I haven't really seen anyone play before. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.